Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and, ooh, echo, echo. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, haven't published in a while. I have so much I wanna share, uh, but I wanna dive right into a topic that is important to me right now. Um, I, and I'm ashamed of that. I was, or I have been using iCloud to sync my contacts and my calendar between my Mac and my iPhone. Oh. It is, it has been something on my shit list for so long to kind of break up with Apple and, and just move that some other place. So I went down that rabbit hole and that's what I wanna talk about today. But I wanna start with a punch. Um, while doing this research, I stumbled upon this uh, article by Apple, which I'll link in the description. Uh, it talks about iCloud security overview um, and it talks about end-to-end -end encryption and Apple is this very privacy conscious company. They're spending, you know, millions on advertising, putting billboards, stuff like this. And, and they've done some decent work in some places, but they also have been quite despicable on other places or is that, is that even English? Um, so yeah, one would think that our contacts and our calendar, two very sensitive pieces of data about us, uh, would be end-to-end -end encrypted. That means that when the data is created on your computer, uh, it is synchronized with other devices, but in a way where it's encrypted on our computer before being, you know, sent to the other devices. And this is this is not not the case at all. Uh, <laughs> woo. Um, so going down here, uh, we get to kind of see what data types and, and associated encryption happen at Apple. So, okay, backups um, in transit and on server. So let's go through a little bit of vocabulary here. Uh, in transit means when your computer sends data to their servers, while the data is in transit to their servers, it is encrypted. That's the same as when you go on your banking website. It's HTTPS, for instance. That means your computer does a Diffie-Hellman key exchange with the server. It both agree on a shared key and then data is encrypted. It prevents men in the middle attacks, stuff like this. Um, and then on server, or usually that's called, sorry, at rest. That means that the server itself has some form of full disk encryption. That means that the data is encrypted on the server. It means if uh, an attacker grabs one of the servers in the rack, runs with it, they cannot access the data. The data that said is, you know, encrypted and decrypted using encryption keys on that server while it's being operated. Uh, really sophisticated data sets can use HSMs or hardware uh, security modules that store encryption keys uh, but all you have to know is those keys are under the governance of that vendor or provider. That means that Apple can definitely access all the data. That said, they get to create governance schemes to make sure that, you know, not all employees can just read this data. That said, um, this data is accessible to Apple. So that's, that's a brief overview of in-transit and on-server encryption. Uh, and it says a minimum of 128-bit AES is used uh, 128 is good enough. Uh, military standards is more around 256. Uh, so we can see here that calendars are encrypted in transit and on server. Uh, same applies to contacts. Uh, same applies to iCloud Drive. What that means is all of our data is accessible to Apple if Apple uh, is subpoenaed or whatever, so it does not use end-to-end -end encryption. That is why I have been wanting to break up with iCloud uh, and you know contact and calendar sharing forever, and I've done it. So over the following few days, I'm gonna be bringing you guys along down that rabbit hole and I'll be sharing all of what I've learned, but I wanted this, I wanted us to get this out of the way right away. iCloud, is not end-to-end -end encrypted. That means that any data that you upload to iCloud is accessible by Apple. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go down alternatives over the upcoming days, one of which is Radical. It's an open source project uh, started by a guy in France. The project is super cool. I'll be discussing it as a really sovereign, self-hostable alternative. And then we'll be talking about ProtonMail and Tutanota and also about CalDAV and CARDAV, the two 
uh, really old protocols that are used in probably 99.99% of implementations for calendar and contact sharing. Whoa, I'm glad to be back. I have a lot to share about a lot of other topics as well. So yeah, um, I do want to take a moment here to also say that uh, some of you are members uh, or had become members on the old website. I am ridiculously pumped to share that the old website if you've been around for some time, is back on steroids. So everything that some of you liked about the old website that had gone away when I moved everything to GitHub is back. That is the Privacy Guides reference material, which is so much more intelligible on this website. If you want to learn about something Debian, you can just use a search and then access all of this information in a really user-friendly way like this. Um, so the Privacy Guides, Reference material is now accessible on the website away from trackers. Uh, but, and that is something that I am so proud of. Um, it does require membership. I'll put that out here right away. All of you have memberships, have been migrated over to this. Now, when you look at recent episodes, something that was only available on YouTube uh, within the realm of Google trackers and profiling. All of this stuff is now self-hosted and available when you have a membership. You can now stream this right there. It's crazy. I've created my own streaming platform. And if it's not crazy enough, I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll have a look at the camera here. Woo, this is, oh, this is weird. Spatial awareness is upside down when I'm recording this. Oh man, I won't be able to do this. Here, somewhere, I have my own little data center. Uh, I do have fiber coming here at this house. And when you stream videos on my website, you are actually streaming them from here from the lab, I mean, I have shivers. It's so crazy, it is so crazy. Uh, obviously, it's going through some routing so that you don't get to know my IP. Um, more on this, by the way, in a later, later episode. I'm using Malvad and it's quite amazing what you can do uh, for more technical use cases on Malvad. But yeah, all of this stuff is streamed from this house. The server itself, uh, not the server, but the website is uh, hosted in Iceland. So the whole thing is like ridiculously sovereign. So anyways, when you have a membership, you get to watch this stuff down there. And I know it's kind of a weird place to put this, but I had no other option for now. Uh, you get to uh, essentially, oh, now I showed you my email. I'm gonna have to mask this in post-production, but you get to do this. You can manage your subscription. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like when you're not logged in. So when you're not logged in, uh, if I reload this page, uh, it says become a member to watch here. If you wanna click there, members watch episodes here away from trackers and get occasional discounts on store, wish to support my work in a grand way, please consider donating. This is supported by you. If you wanna be able to get more content, it's a great way of supporting this project if you donate or if you become a member or both. Um, and yeah, some of you have been donating, so thanks to everyone who has. And for those of you who were early adopters in the membership program, I mean, Thank you so much for having supported my work. Uh, quick uh, update, um, I am pulling the plug on Ask Me Anything's live streams. I'm trying to streamline uh, what I do with my time and very few of you were attending. So really the value that you get as a member is you get to watch the episodes on the website uh, and you get occasional discounts on store. Right now, QR Bridge is the only thing on the store, but there will be other products and I will likely be releasing master classes sometime in the future. So that is it, that's the updates. I will be talking about all kinds of things and I'm just gonna tickle you a bit here. Um, I, for the longest of times, was using an iPhone uh, on iOS and I've been becoming more and more upset about the wall garden of Apple and what, how it's just like impossible to do anything on iOS uh, with any form of you know independence or sovereignty. Uh, so I'm really happy to say that I have now switched to Graphene OS. Uh, I'm running Android. I know, I know it's crazy, uh, but it's been quite the adventure and I'm really excited about it. So tons of content coming your way. 
uh, I will be more, 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 much more often now on YouTube because I've been doing a shit ton of research and I want to share all of it with you. So yeah, see you soon. Bye.